The water cycle is a biogeochemical cycle. Biogeochemical. Bio, because part of the time, we're talking about these elements that part of the time they're within biological systems. Geo means the earth, so part of the time these elements are in the atmosphere or in the earth and chemicals. So we're talking about elements here, so biogeochemical cycles. The first one we're going to talk about is the water cycle. I'm picking that one first of all because that's the one that I'm sure you know most about. So first of all, here we go, um, let's do the water cycle. When we talk about biogeochemical cycles, we talk about the fact that there's reservoirs where the chemical or the substance, the molecule, spends most of its time. And water, the reservoir for water is in the oceans. So a large amount of water is in the oceans. Now, of course, that water goes up into the sky and it does that through a process of evaporation. So, water goes up into the sky through a process of evaporation. And then, once it's in the sky, it forms into clouds. So, that's a process called condensation. So, condensation is the process of that water vapour then condensing and turning back into a liquid form. So we've got liquid form in the ocean, evaporation, energy from the sun uh, converts that liquid water into uh, water vapour or gaseous water and that evaporates up into the sky where it condenses again to form clouds. Now most of the rain doesn't actually occur straight down over the ocean goes over the land and that's where we have the next Asian and of course that Asian is called precipitation. Precipitation, rain, hail, sleet, snow. Precipitation is when that uh, liquid water goes from the sky down onto the land or maybe into the oceans but you know back down to earth. From that position, one of a couple of things happens. We can go straight and run off, uh, off the land, back into the ocean. That's called runoff. Sometimes it gets stored in, you know, in lakes and, you know, water, uh, fresh water reservoirs. Most of the runoff, though, is down through rivers, back to the ocean. But some of the water also seeps down through the rock and is stored underground in things called aquifers. Now that's an underground water reservoir. So water can run down through the ground into stored in aquifers. So we've got actually got a large amount of water that's stored underground in aquifers. Now Human impact, always thinking about what do humans do to affect these cycles. One of the things, of course, is that uh, we dam rivers to hold water in certain spots so it's convenient for us. Uh, and some of these can be really quite large and obviously we get evaporation off that, etc. And that means there's less water running off down into the oceans. Uh, many of the chemicals and the fertilizers and things that are used by farming land and industrial land runs off down through into the oceans. Um, disruptions of uh, the climate means that we're having more areas of drought and also uh, areas of um, really strong and dangerous weather events. But a really important one I want to talk to you about is the fact that the water that's in these aquifers is, um, is drained or accessed by farmers through bores. A bore is a, um, a big long pipe that goes down into the aquifer and the water is pumped out and is sprayed onto crops uh, to, to help the, the yield of the produce that um, 
that the farm is growing. Now, the trouble is, it takes thousands of years for the water to uh, percolate. This is called percolation. Um, and it takes thousands of years for the water to percolate down into these aquifers. And the farmers are removing that water and spraying it around far quicker than it's being filled. So, what happens next is that the aquifers are going to become empty. And the impact of that is it means that the farmers will no longer be able to access this water. They'll no longer be able to grow the crops at that same rate. So, uh, it means that in the future we may well have food shortages because we don't have the water available to, um, to grow the crops as quickly. So that's a real problem for us. So just like all of the other cycles, human impact on the water cycle is a huge issue.